This is Lesson 25, Part 1, Rhythm Reading Practice. I'm going to spend the next several sessions just reading through as many examples of rhythms in simple and compound time as I can. The idea being that in the future you can return to these videos and use them as practice aids if it's helpful to you. Returning to Sally K. Albrecht's Rhythm Workshop. Beginning with exercise 73 in the 6-8 section of the book, we're going to start, as always, by interpreting the time signature. Looking at the top number of the time signature, we see that we have a 6. And we remember right away that if we see a 6, a 9, or a 12 as the top number of a time signature, we know we're in compound meter. Therefore, we're going to have to do an extra step of decoding in order to figure out what our big beat or pulse note will be, since the time signature itself will actually tell us how many subdivided or little beats there are in each measure, and what the note value of our subdivided or little beat or pulse note will be. So the top six tells us there are six little beats per measure, and the bottom eight we could think of as being like the denominator of a fraction reminds us that an eighth note will be our little beat or pulse note value. So first of all, I'm going to draw out my six subdivided or little beats per measure. So I have six eighth notes, and these six eighth notes will be our little beats per measure. Remember that in compound meter, our big beat is a dotted note value that naturally divides into three equal parts. So therefore, in 6-8 time, our big beat note will be a dotted quarter note, since a dotted quarter note naturally divides into three equal eighth notes. So our dotted quarter note will be our big beat. Now I'm going to go over to my dotted note value pyramid and just assign one beat to each dotted quarter note and two beats to each dotted half note and four beats to each dotted whole note and I'll stop there. So in all of the examples on this page, I see I have eighth notes, eighth rests, dotted quarter notes and dotted quarter rests. So anytime we see a dotted quarter note, we're going to use the Gordon rhythm syllable do, since do represents our one beat note. When we see a dotted quarter rest, we'll just think that do syllable internally or whisper or mouth it. Recall that our eighth notes will then be worth one third of a beat each. The Gordon rhythmic syllables we use to represent one third beat notes are do, da, di. So we will use those syllables to represent our eighth notes. Setting the metronome at 60, we're going to put this big beat into our hands or our feet. Remember that this beat that we're hearing from the metronome is our dotted quarter note beat. Ready, clap. Ready, speak. Do, do, da, di, do, 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 da, di, do, do, da, di, do, do, da, di, do, do, da, di, do, da, di, do, do. Looking at example two, for this one, I want to just take the time to mark our do's just in case that's a helpful tool to you. I'll show you how that would work in compound meter. So this would be my first do. Three eighth notes together in six eight time will be one full big beat. So my next do falls here on the next set of eighth notes. And you notice how in six eight time it's very typical to beam three eighth notes together so that we can more easily identify these bigger beats. 6-8 times a compound duple meter, which is why we have two big beats per measure. Continuing on, we have our next do here. A dotted quarter note is our do beat. Here's our next do. Three eighth notes make our next do. Another three eighth notes. Do for the dotted quarter note. One beat for the 
dotted quarter rest. Our next do will fall on this first eighth note. And remember that three eighth notes together are equivalent to our big dotted beat note. Our next do falls here on the dotted quarter note. Then we have our next do starting with that eighth note. Again, three eighth notes together, an eighth note, an eighth rest, and another eighth note are equivalent to one big dotted quarter note beat in 6-8 time. Here's our next do. Our next do falls here. Three eighth notes together equal our one big beat. Do, do on the dotted quarter rest, and do on the dotted quarter note. I want to take the time to look at measure five. One, two, three, four, five. So right here. And I'm just going to write in the eighth note little beat pulse that we'll feel in that measure. So one eighth note falls here, one eighth note falls on the rest, one eighth note falls here on this eighth note. Three more eighth notes fill in this dotted quarter note. So if you're having any trouble analyzing which syllables to say, especially when you're first beginning to read in duple time, we can take the time to write in our syllables. So do, da, di, do, da, di, because those are the Gordon syllables we use to describe one third beat notes. And then we could underline the syllables that we'll need to speak and cross out the ones that we will just think internally or whisper mouth as they're helpful, especially when you first try to interpret this rhythm. So do we will say da, we will not say, we will whisper that, we will say d again. And then we will say the do and just hold that through the da and the d. Without even keeping a steady beat right now with my hand or my foot, I'm just going to try and speak these syllables slowly. Do, da, di, do. Do that again. Do, da, di, do. And now without the metronome, just keeping a stable pulse with my hand. Nice and slow. Ready, speak. Do, di, do. I'm going to set the metronome down a little bit at 50 per big beat. So this is our dotted quarter note beat. If you can, try to keep that subdivided pulse going either internally or whispered or mouth as it's helpful. Most important is that we keep track of these big beats. Ready, clap. Ready, speak. Do da di, do da di, do, do. Do da di, do da di, do. Do, de, do, do, de, do, 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 da, de, do, da, de, do. Moving on to example three. Again, we're in six, eight time, so I'm not going to reinterpret the time signature, but remember that our dotted quarter note is our big beat or pulse note, and our undotted eighth notes will be our subdivided or little beat or pulse notes. I'm going to start at measure five in drawing in our dues just to help make this clearer. Again, this is just demonstrating a practice technique you could use if it's helpful. That's my first do. The two eighth notes plus the one eighth note rest complete that beat, so my next do falls here. Again, two eighth notes plus an eighth note rest completes that big beat. My next do falls here. Eighth note, eighth rest, eighth note. Three, one third beat notes together complete that do. So my next do falls here. It's the same pattern I just did. Eighth note, eighth rest, eighth note together. Those add up to one dotted quarter note. So that beat is complete. And we're just going to look at these two measures. This time, I'm just going to write in the do da di syllables. Do, da, di, do, 
da di do da di do da di and this is purely for the purpose of decoding especially at first you'll start to find there are a lot of common patterns that are used repetitively in compound meter so once you get the idea of them you'll more easily be able to decode them without thinking too much about it similar to when a child first starts to sound out a word like cat they really do have to think about each letter sound and blending them eventually it almost becomes a sight word and then it becomes to the point where you don't have to even think twice about any kind of blending or letter sounds you just know to say cat as soon as your eye even catches it these rhythms really will become that fluent if you keep working at it but it's normal to need to for lack of a better term sound out each rhythm at first and this is one method of doing that so i'm going to underline that i will say do i will say da i will mouth or whisper d do da mouth or whisper d do mouth or whisper da d do mouth or whisper da d now i'm just going to try saying these syllables with a nice steady pulse without even tapping or clapping a bigger beat do da t do da t do da d do da d and i could do that many times until it almost becomes that i don't have to think about it at all setting the metronome at 50 we'll keep this big beat in our hands or feet if possible, keep a subdivided pulse going internally or mouthed or whispered is helpful of do da di do da di. Ready, clap. Ready, speak. Do, do, do da di do, 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 do da di do da, do da, do, di do. D do da di do do da di do. Moving to exercise forty two in the two four section of our book, we'll be beginning with example five. As always, we'll begin by interpreting the time signature. The top number of the time signature tells us that there are two beats per measure, and since the top number is a two, a three, or a four, we know we're in simple time, in this case, simple duple time. The bottom number of the time signature tells us that a quarter note is our one beat or pulse note. From there, we can go up to our note and rest value pyramids and assign specifically one beat to each quarter note and quarter rest, two beats to each half note and half rest, four beats to whole notes and whole rest, half a beat to each eighth note and eighth rest. We only have quarter notes, quarter rests, half notes and half rests on this entire page, so we don't need to worry about subdividing a beat. Setting the metronome at 70, we're going to put the big beat or pulse note into our hands or feet. Ready, tap. Ready, speak. Do, 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 do. Moving on to example six, take a moment to see this whole rest here. And remember that even though we're in 2-4 time and technically a whole rest is worth four beats, in this case it just means one full measure of rest. So we'll hold it for two beats. Continuing with metronome at 70, one, two, ready, clap. Ready, speak. Do, 